This is why golf is the most frustrating, but also the most brilliant game ever. So greetings guys, Sai here, and welcome to another episode, episode 35 of Project Left. Exciting day today, because it's the first time that mum and dad are actually gonna get to see me play left-handed properly. So there they are, wandering up the old fairway. It's a bit of a rainy day, so let's hit some shots, a bit of B-roll, and we'll have a bit of a chat about what they think of Project Left. This isn't gonna be the fun, happy episode that it started out to be. There is a serious reality check in here. But I do hope it does provide you with some context and some realistic expectations about what we all put on ourselves on our golf games. First of all, I do wanna say that I really, really love the opportunity to play with mum and dad. I don't get the opportunity very often to play with both of them and it's fantastic that they are both golfers and that we can enjoy sharing the experience of going around the golf course together. The highs, the lows, everything in between, it is fantastic. So I hope you stick around to the end and I hope what I say in the next few minutes does help you get in the right mindset to play your best golf because it certainly is a lesson that I learned today. So despite that gloomy opening, I actually shot 90 today, gross, with my parents, which is level to my 18 handicap. And in a competitive round, that's quite good. Scoring those 36 points is excellent. Also, I got my first two birdies at Barry and Edmonds, yes. So that is definitely a monkey off my back. That was something that was bugging me, to be honest. I hadn't got those birdies, and it was something that I really, really wanted. You know, when you really want something and you just feel like, you know, it's really attainable. I should have had those birdies by now. I should have made a birdie at Barry St. Evans, and today I did it. Unfortunately, <laughs> neither of them were caught on camera. Um, the first one I hit it, as you can see here, to around about 10, 12 feet on the ninth, hit a lovely shot into the ninth green. Gave the uh, camera to my camera person, who uh, shall remain nameless, but I'm sure you can guess by who is in frame at the moment uh, who that was. And just as I was about to take my putt, the stop button was pressed, which meant that it stopped recording. Now, I'm gonna take full responsibility for that. I should have told you, Dad, that the screen goes blank after a minute on the GoPro. Don't worry, it's still recording. He maybe panicked and then pressed the button and not realizing I'm gonna take full responsibility for that. That is my fault. Also, the other birdie on the other par three there on the 13th was also my fault. I hit the ball on the front right of the green, the pin was back right, maybe 40, 50 foot putt, it was a huge putt. The, the, the chances of me making that putt were like 0.01%, there was no chance of me making that putt, but thanks to aim point and thanks to me getting the speed right for once, it did drop in the hole and my celebration would have been quite amazing to catch on camera. So yeah, two birdies in 18 holes. Like London buses, like Ben said in one of the comments last week, you wait for ages and then all of a sudden two come along. So two birdies, really, really brilliant for me. I've never had a birdie at Barry St Edmonds and to have two birdies in one round was fantastic. I also had four pars, which means that for a third of the golf course, for six holes, I was actually two under par gross. But I still ended up with 90, which meant that the other 12 holes, I must have been 20 over par. That included three triple bogeys and two double bogeys. So for five holes, I was 13 over par. This is where golf gets frustrating, isn't it? This is why golf is the most frustrating, but also the most brilliant game ever. We just don't know why. We can't put our finger on why these things happen. We know we have the ability, we know we can score better, and yet it just doesn't happen. So I'm gonna talk you through what happened on the 18th hole, which is a prime example, I think, of what we all go through as amateur golfers. I'm now classing myself as an amateur golfer left-handed. I think I've hopefully moved beyond the beginner stage, and now that I'm down to 18 handicap, I'm classing myself as a regular amateur golfer. So hopefully I'm speaking directly to you guys that feel like you know what you're doing on the golf course, but the scores just, they just don't quite add up. Now the regular viewers will know that I add my scores up after 17 holes. Don't ask me why, it's one of those crazy things that I do, but I do like to know before I start the last hole where I'm at. 
it may well affect my decision making for the positive, for the negative, but I like to know what's going on. So I added my score up after 17 holes and I had 36 points, which meant that I was level to my handicap. I wasn't gonna go up 0.1, I wasn't gonna shoot over my handicap, and it was a chance for me to really get another nice little cut. My handicap is 17.7, so I only needed to be one under my handicap and I'd be down to 17, and I know that. And that, I think, affected my decision-making, it affected my pressure, and it affected my mood and my decision-making and my execution on that last hole. So let's talk through it. I decided to hit driver off the tee. I didn't film this shot, but it went 260 yards, straight down the middle, just past the bunker. It was, it was perfect. It wasn't as good a driver as I could hit, but it was in the middle of the fairway, and it gave me no problems. So I had a decision to make. Par five, last hole, I've hit it 260 off the tee, I've got 270 into the green, I cannot reach, that's out of the question, but I decided to go with five wood. The reason I chose my five wood was because previously I'd hit two very bad three woods off the fairway, and I thought that extra loft might be giving me a little bit more forgiveness, a little bit more chance to get the ball into a good position to hit the third shot on the green. There's a bunker at 240 that I know I can't reach with a five wood, but there was a bunker at 190 that hopefully I could get over, and that gave me 50 yard window to land my ball in. Now I think the decision was sound. Maybe in hindsight I would have gone with the rescue or a six iron potentially to leave myself a longer third shot into the green, but I really, I really don't think I would have done. I think I would always go with five wood. Unfortunately, I toe skied the ball 120 yards off to the left into the trees and into the rough, but it was okay. I moved it forwards and I actually had a good third shot to the green. I had exactly 150 yards to the 18th green. Now admittedly it was over a tree and it was slightly downwind. So I chose an 8 iron simply because there's out of bounds and a bunker and all sorts of trouble out the back of the 18th green. So if I'd chosen my 6 iron and it had come out with a bit of a flyer or I'd really flushed it or I hadn't quite caught it and it hadn't got over the trees. These were all things that were going through my mind. So I chose the eight iron because I knew that I only needed to strike it fairly well to clear the trees and hopefully it would reach the green. If not, it would fall in the front bunker or short of the front bunker and it would give me a shot up into the green. And as you can hear from the audio on this clip, I did strike it well, but I just left the face open and which meant the ball went across to the left again and I was very, very lucky in where the ball finished up. I was fortunate because I'm playing left-handed. I was right next to a tree and I could easily have been stymied. If I'd have been playing this shot right-handed, I would have been in serious trouble. But left-handed, I had a clear swing and a clear shot 57 yards to the green. I'm sitting there in for three, knowing that all I need to do is get the ball on the green, and then I have two putts for my two points, which would be a nice 0.6 handicap cut, get me closer to that 16 handicap. All of these things are going through my head, knowing also there's out of bounds out the back, there's a bunker behind the green, there's a bunker short that I know I need to go over, and also the ball's sitting very fluffy up on the top of the grass, and the ball, as you can see, is slightly above my feet. As you can see from my reaction here before I hit the shot, the pressure is on. I, I know at this point what is going on, and it's then, have I got the ability to execute under this pressure? Unfortunately, as you can see, I hit the ground as I hit the ball, which meant that I hit the ball too high in the club face, I didn't deliver the power that I expected to the ball, and the ball ended up in the bunker. Now, if I show you this in replay, you can see that I actually did make the same length swing in my actual swing as I did in my practice swing. It was just the strike. So I can let myself off for that one. What I can't let myself off from is what happens next. So I'm in the bunker. I know that I need to get up and two putts would give me a point, up and down for a point and we'll be okay. But also in the back of my head, there is that out of bounds, there is that hedge, there is that bunker behind the green. And also I know that I have a very shallow angle of attack and all of these things conspiring in my head and I thinned it into the face of the bunker and left it in the bunker. The cardinal sin couldn't do that. That was not the option, anything other than leaving it in a bunker. So now I'm faced with exactly the same shot, just one more on my card. I managed to get it out and then leave myself a putt for one point. Unfortunately, I missed it. I made the triple bogey. I didn't get a handicap cut. And to be honest, I went through a range of emotions. When I review my rounds and when I plan these videos, I do actually think about how I'm gonna tailor these videos. And this video could easily have been any one of these emotions. Why? Why me? Why me? 
but actually it's all about learning, not just for me, but for everybody watching. If you've stuck around to this point, I just wanna say a very big thank you because I know this has been quite a long rant, but I think it's something I need to get off my chest. And I think hopefully it's something that you guys can learn from too. Golf is a very, very hard game. And the sooner we realize that, the better. I shot 90, which is level to my handicap. I should be very pleased with that. The manner in which I went about it really tells a lot about my game and about my potential and about where I can go moving forward. The fact that I made two birdies and four pars means that there is definite ability for me to get better. For me, it's all about that execution. Now I'm lucky, I've played golf to a fairly good standard right-handed, and I know that that knowledge gives me an advantage left-handed. My ability isn't anywhere near my knowledge yet, but I know that my knowledge is fairly sound. So for me, my practice is gonna be all based around, as it has been for the last few months, strike. Teach myself how to hit the middle of the club face, because that's what's gonna really get my handicap down. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Project Lit. I feel like I needed to get that rant off my back, off my chest. It's something that I really felt I needed to say. It's not gonna be easy, this journey. This is a really a reality check for me. Golf's not gonna be a linear progression from beginner to expert. There are gonna be some bumps along the way, and today was definitely one of those. And I can look at that in two ways. Oh, woe is me, I'm no good, this is no good, I'm terrible at golf. Or, I actually made two birdies. I made four pars. I made quite a few bogeys, where on holes I plan to make bogeys on because I'm not trying to be aggressive off the tee. Okay, I made three triple bogeys and they are negatives and they need to be cut out, but I feel like I can cut them out. And I hope you guys can too. It is December, it is winter, the golf course isn't playing to its best, the greens aren't as good as they could be, the fairways are fairly soggy, the ball isn't running, golf is gonna get better in the spring. But let's use this time to really, really focus on what we can practice. I'm gonna be practicing strike. I'm gonna certainly be practicing distance control. I'm gonna keep on with my swing. I've got some big ideas and some big plans for this winter. So I hope you're invigorated and I hope you want to get that practice. This is the perfect time of year to get motivated, get started, get that head start before those New Year's resolutions kick in. Use December to really push on with your practice and with your improvement of your skill, because that essentially is what's gonna get you better at golf. You can have all the fundamentals and all the mechanics in the world, but you need to have the skill, the confidence, the trust, and the ability to have that execution, that clear thought process to hit those shots. More on that in other videos to come. That is definitely enough for me today. So as always, if you do enjoy the content from Project Left that I do, and you enjoy Adam's Project Win, and you enjoy the stuff that PGA Life do together, please, why not think about hitting that subscribe button? It would mean a heck of a lot to Adam and I. It really makes a difference. It means you get all of our content free of charge. If you ring that bell notification, you'll get a notification to your phone, to your email, to your computer, as soon as we upload, so you don't miss any of our content. And if you wanna watch any of the other videos that we've got, coming on the screen now, that would also be fantastic. So until next time, I'm Simon, this was Project Left. You can hear me getting my feet ready because you know what's coming and we'll see you down here on PGA Life 365 next time. <sighs> I got ya.